Is your return of serve causing you to lose points? Maybe you don't know what shot to play, or you don't know what to do after your partner has returned the serve. Well, after analysing hundreds of matches, we're going to show you the five most effective returns of serve in men's doubles, along with what to do after these. And they get better as we go, so stay tuned until the end. Yeah, this is such an important topic, because on average, between 40 and 50% of points are won or lost within the first four shots. So let's get straight into it. Firstly, to be able to play all five returns effectively, you and your partner need to be set up in the right position. And for this, we have three main points. One, you should ideally be as close to the service line as possible, while still being able to get the flick serve back. This will help you to take the short serve earlier and therefore enable you to play a better quality shot. Two, you should have your racket out in front of you in a relaxed grip. You don't want to have your racket out too far to either side as this can limit your options. And three, your partner should be around the middle of the court, not too far back or too far on their side. This is because they need to be ready to cover different parts of the court depending on where you return to. But we'll discuss this more throughout the video. So now onto the returns. We're starting off with a bang, a return straight down the tram line, either soft to create indecision or hard to put pressure on the rear court player. For both of these, the most likely reply is a reactive shot straight up the line. And this is where your partner comes round and bang. It's most effective for your partner to move round because they can step into the shot. And if your opponent does manage to play a harder shot, then your partner can still easily get this. So what should you be doing as the returner after you've hit this return? Well, you should move cross. Doing this allows you to commit more to the return of serve because you're not getting the most likely reply. And if you play a good shot, it's almost impossible for your opponent to play it cross court to the back. So you don't need to cover this. Of course, if you're not committing to the return of serve, then your return will probably go upwards and you'll get in trouble. If this is you, try experimenting, like bringing your racket leg through, which might help you to take the shuttle earlier. We'll also give you some more tips on how to make sure your return is going downwards later in the video. So that's how to do this return, but when should you actually play it? Well, to keep it simple, you ideally want to be setting up your partner's forehand for the fourth shot, as this is often people's stronger side. For example, if you're right-handed and your partner is left-handed, you would return from the left-hand side straight down the line. Or if you're both right-handed, which is most common, then you would do this return from the right-hand side. And it's important to mention that you would only really do this set play when they serve to the tee or body. It's really difficult to do it if they serve across you, as you won't have enough time to play it and then move cross. But yeah, performed well, this return is either a winning shot or your opponents fall into the trap and set you or your partner up on a plate. Bang! <laughs> So moving on to the second of our five returns, and this is where you place the shuttle in the space between the server and their partner to create uncertainty over whose shot it is. The aim is for your shot to either be an outright winner or force your opponents to play it in an upwards direction. As you'll again have to commit to play a good shot, you're then only able to cover any shots to the net or your side. Your partner should get everything else. Unfortunately, not many people are as good as Hendra Setiwan, who can play this return and be so fast to read the reply and move to intercept the cross-court shot like this. But if you are, then go for it. Now there are two problems that intermediate players often face with this return, and these are that you're relying on your partner to have good movement to cover the back of the court, and also that you're relying on playing an effective downward shot. If you find you face these problems, then we'd recommend either practicing it more or watching the rest of this video. So, like the first return, you'd play this when your opponent serves to your tee or body area, and you can use it on both your forehand and backhand side. OK, moving on, our third return is where you hit hard down the middle. This is great because if you hit hard in a downwards direction, most players will hit a hard reactive shot back up to either you or your partner, especially if you hit it with good accuracy and not directly onto the racket. And where should you move to afterwards as the returner? Well, we'd recommend moving to cover the side where you're most comfortable intercepting from, or where you think they'll play to. So, for example, if I was to return to a right-hander, I would almost always cover my forehand side afterwards. And what should your partner be covering? Well, because you've hit the return to the middle, your opponent can't create much angle, so your partner should cover the other side. If you hit a good return, then your partner can be really high up the court, expecting a weaker reply. But if your return isn't that good, then your partner should also be ready for the lift over the top. We'd recommend doing this return either when your opponents have done a bad serve or you're able to take it early enough to be able to get it going in a downwards direction. You don't want to hit this return in an upwards direction or this might happen. 
If you're really aggressive with this shot, it can intimidate your opponents and make them scared to serve to you for the rest of the match. But we're not liable for any injuries caused as a result of this return. Now we have three ways to help you get the shuttle going in a downwards direction. And listen closely, as these are also applicable for the first two returns. Tip one, practice being more explosive from your starting position. And remember, standing closer to the service line can help with this. Two, have a short swing. If you have a long swing, then your contact point with the shuttle will be later, possibly forcing you to hit it upwards in order to get it over the net. And three, squeeze your fingers and thumb to add power into the shot, rather than using your whole arm. Again, this will help you to have a short swing, and we recently did an entire video on how to use your fingers and thumb in badminton, which we'll link below in case you missed it. Okay, now for our fourth and possibly my favourite return, and this is a net shot. This is a great choice to either get the lift at the start of the rally or even force your opponent into a mistake. And from wherever your opponent serves to, you can hit your net shot to any area, like straight, to the middle, or even cross. But where do you move to after this? Well, you should always stay at the net after you've played this return, so you can be in a front and back formation, because hopefully you now have the attack, and your partner should be ready for the lift. Three tips for a great net shot return are one, to still be explosive moving forwards with both your body and your legs, and not just your arm. If you just lead with your arm outstretched, you'll reduce your control and also make it obvious to your opponent that you're going to play a net shot. Two, you need to hit your shot with a flat racket face so that it doesn't go too high over the net, or again, show your opponent that you're going to play a net shot. And three, have a short swing using your fingers and thumb to create the control. Now, for the returns we've covered so far, you have to take it early. But for this return, you can take it a bit later and it still be effective. Using all of these returns add variety into your game so that your opponents don't know what's coming. So if you play a net shot a few times, your opponent might start to move forwards after serving to look for this. And this now creates a space just past them. And if you've also been playing return number one and three to push their partner back, it will really create space for return two, a soft shot down into the area of uncertainty. Similarly, if you play lots of these soft returns down the side, your opponents might look for this, therefore making your net shots or hard returns much more effective. See, they all link together. Now in last week's video, we talked about the different serves you can play in men's doubles and the need to communicate with your partner. And if you want to do these first four returns effectively, we'd recommend doing the same. Yeah, and this might be as simple as saying, I'm playing hard to the middle and moving right, or I'm playing a net shot. There are obviously lots more returns than the four we've mentioned so far, like playing cross court in returns one and two. But after analyzing hundreds of hours of badminton, these are the returns that work against the majority of people. Now last, but definitely not least, is a deceptive return, where you can either do this or this. You should often do these after you've already played the shot that you want them to think you're playing. And where should you both move to after this? Well, hopefully your return is so good that you don't need to worry about this. So to learn these deceptive returns, you can watch this video here. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then make sure you do so, as in the next couple of weeks, we're releasing the video you've all been waiting for, Men's Doubles Tactics, and maybe also a video with a giveaway. <laughs> See you soon.